Hi, I'm Tim and you're watching another video from Mr. Tim Tech. In this video, we're going to be discussing and taking a look at QNAP. Well, the size of QNAP NAS. And here's the box. Inside we have a QNAP NAS and it's a four bay and it's the model number TS462. So let's get this box opened, have a look inside and I'll go through what the device is, what it features it has on it and also the specifications for it. But not only that, we also have another box here, plain packaging as you can see and inside we have four small boxes and inside these little boxes are four four terabyte Seagate Ironwolf NAS rated hard drives and these were kindly provided well donated by Seagate to go with this NAS so a big thanks out there to Seagate for sending these drives so let's start off with unboxing the QNAP NAS so what we'll do is open the box I'll get the uh, parts set up on my desk here behind me and um, we'll take a look at the features for it. So looking at the box we have the uh, label with the model, serial number, barcodes and so on. So opening the box, inside we have the UK power lead which goes into the power brick. So this has an external power brick with it so it doesn't have an internal power supply but that doesn't matter really I mean what's the difference between a cable coming out of the device and it being powered through a power brick doesn't matter to me so we have polystyrene packaging on the top inside the box we have another small box here as you can see and inside this box I presume is the power brick Yes, so we have the power brick there with the uh, power connector there that goes into the NAS, as you can see. It's one of the smaller power connectors. We also have a plastic bag with two smaller plastic bags inside. And these are for the drive mounting screws which mount into the drive bay. We also have a warranty leaflet there and also a quick installation guide there. And there's also a card with information about purchasing an extended warranty. And we also have a RJ45 Ethernet cable. Now, um, this NAS is actually a 2.5 gigabit one. So I presume this might be either a CAT5E or probably a CAT6 cable. So we just put that box to one side and let's take out the mass. And we'll move that box out the way. And here we have the NAS, which is supplied in a plastic bag. And also this had some uh, plastic film on the front of it as well to protect the uh, shiny front door on the NAS which I already did take off just to save a bit of time with the unboxing. So uh, we'll get this put on my desk and then we'll zoom the camera in and take a closer look at this in a moment. So let's move these leaflets, screws and so on and power leads and power brick to one side and we'll take a closer look at the NAS now. And here we are with the NAS now on the desk. And as you can see, we have the QNAP logo at the front. And this is a white, shiny plastic cover, which is released with the uh, dotted section there, which you slide to the left. I mean left if you're facing the front of it, so that's slide it to the left, and it just releases off. And inside we have the four drive bays. So this has four drive bays, and these are SATA compatible drive bays and these are released by just pushing down the lever and sliding forward the drive cage and in there we have the four drive cages. 
Now these drive cages support either 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch SATA hard drives and as I said the screws for mounting the drives are supplied with the NAS so you get 12 screws for mounting two and a half inch drives or 14 or 16 screws for mounting the three and a half inch drives so let's just slot that back in they slot in quite easily and smoothly and we have as I said four drive bays now with the cover there's two magnetic sections there so this actually slides on the front and goes in forward like that and then the magnets just lock it into place however at the side here there's also a locking switch which you slide up and then this locks the actual front cover from being released so you just slide it down and then that unlocks it then at the right hand side we have a gold plastic bar or gold strip whichever you like to call it and from the top we have the power button then we have a information or power light so that's a status light then we have the ethernet connection light and then also we have the USB connection light there and then we have one two three four so we have the dr four drive status LEDs there then we have a USB 3.2 type A and it's a gen 2 so it supports up to 10 gigabits per second transfer speed then under that we have a another button which I presume is for automatic backup or it actually refers to the USB port for doing syncing data or backing up data I believe from the USB port but we'll go into that later what this button does when we go through setting it up which will be in the second video in this series so in the second video we'll get the drive inserted get the device powered on and we'll go through basic setup and sharing folders on the NAS which is what it's basically designed to do however it will do a lot more than just file sharing but again we'll go into that in future videos so looking at the top we have a label and it's saying it is a NAS and the model number which is TS 462 4G however hyphen 4G is not shown on this label but it is actually uh, 4G which means it's got four gigabytes of RAM and it also says on the label Intel and HDMI moving to the side we have a small ventilation slot and also the locking switch there which locks the front cover as I've just shown you so moving a step back to the other side we have another label and there's a information about the service portal and also uh, yeah the web link for the service portal and there's also the serial number um, MAC address and also the cloud key number on there as well and there's also a small QR code as there's no holes at the front with the cover on so it would not be open like some NASIs are there's a ventilation slot at the side which actually I like because um, some NASIs without these covers on for example when they're open they do gather a lot of dust in the front of these uh, drive bays so it actually uh, looks a lot nicer as well and hopefully it will keep it cleaner so let's just put the front cover back on looking underneath we have four rubber feet so it's quite thick rubber feet there as you can see and also at the bottom here we have the QNAP label and just the uh, information about the power supply what power requirements and so on then at the back we have one hundred and twenty millimeter fan in there and at the top here this is the expansion slot so this is the PCI Express 3 expansion slot which you could use for either a 5 gigabit or 10 gigabit network expansion card which can be purchased separately then moving down from the left hand side we have the USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A 
10 gigabits per second USB port. So there's two of these, as I said, there's one on the front and this one on the back. Then underneath that, we have um, two more type A USB 2 ports. So these are USB 2 ports. Then underneath that, we have the HDMI port, which supports, as I said, um, 4K up to 60 hertz or 60 frames per second. So it supports 4K. And then moving down, we have the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port here. Then finally at the bottom, we have the connector where you have plugged the uh, power supply in. So that's basically the NAS itself. So what we'll do next is take a look at one of the Seagate hard drives. But before we do that, I'll just go through the specs for the QNAP. It can support virtual machines, containers and so on. There's various apps on the QNAP app store. In fact, there's loads of apps. So anything you can load onto this, it will probably do. Of course, you're limited to how much RAM there is on each NAS. Um, as I said, this has four gigabytes of RAM. It cannot be upgradable. Uh, this one is the maximum, so it has a maximum of four gigabytes in here. However, there is a two gigabyte model. So if you just want it, say, for file sharing, you could always purchase the one which has two gigabytes of RAM. And there's also higher rated RAM ones as well. So there's other NASes in the range, which, for example, would have eight gigabytes of RAM and so on. And there's some which can be upgraded as well. So some models can be upgraded. So as I said, this is a model TS-462-4G. The CPU inside is an Intel Celeron N4505, and it's a two-core, two-thread processor with a maximum burst speed of up to 2.9 gigahertz. The CPU architecture is 64-bit x86 instruction. The graphics processor is an Intel UHD graphics. So some NASes don't support um, graphics processors, don't have graphics processors in them. However, this one does have an Intel UHD graphics. It has a floating point unit. Encryption engine is AES-NI. Hardware accelerated transcoding, it does support. System memory, as I said, is four gigabytes. Maximum is four gigabytes for this model. Flash memory is also four gigabytes, and that's for dual boot OS protection. There's four three and a half inch SATA drive bays. However, it will support two and a half inch drives. And the SATA speed is a maximum of six gigabits per second. The drives in this, so the bays and the drives are hot swappable. So you can hot swap the drives in here. There's two M2-2280 PCI Express Gen 3 slots. And these are Gen 3 times one, actually. So there's two of those, which you can add um, 2280 M2 cards in to have it have cache RAM in there to speed up drive read and writes, for example. And it does support SSD cache acceleration. As I said, there's one 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port and you can upgrade it to 5 or 10 gigabit via that um, PCI Express expansion slot on the back here. It supports jumbo frames. There's also a built-in IR sensor and you can actually control this via remote control. So you can purchase the remote control separately, but it does have an IR sensor built into it. Um, the power supply unit is via a 100 to 240 volt AC power brick and that is a 90 watt adapter. However, the power consumption with hard drives in sleep mode is an average of 20.33 watts. And the power consumption in operating mode with typical settings and so on, typical operations, it's about 32.4 watts. There's also a Kensington security lock on it, which I didn't point out, I don't think. And that is at the back there next to the USB port at the top there. Standard warranty on this is two years. However, you can purchase the extended warranty if you so wish. The maximum number of concurrent connections with CIFS file system 
is 1,500. And that's basically about it for the NAS. So we'll put this to one side. And now what we'll do is take a look at these Seagate drives. So here we are with one of the Seagate Iron Wolf drives. So these are supplied in small individual boxes, as you can see. And inside the cardboard packaging box, so it's all plain cardboard packaging, which can easily be recycled, we have the hard drive. And this is in uh, anti-static protective film, as you can see. So let's just move this box out of the way. And inside, so hopefully you can see this, we've got one of the Seagate Iron Wolf 4 terabyte SATA 6 gigabits per second 3.5 inch hard drives. Now, there's not a lot to see obviously with a hard drive, but there you go, we'll just have a quick look. And as you can see, there's a circuit board underneath, the ribbon cable connecting the drive spindle there, which is inside. And at the back, we have the SATA connector there. Screw holes at the side for mounting and also screw holes uh, underneath as well there. So on the front, we have the label with the date of manufacturer, um, model number. These for information are Seagate Iron Wolf 4 terabyte model ST4000VN006 models. And we have the serial number, part number, and the firmware. These are on firmware SC60. And the date of manufacture on these is the 1st of May 2024. So we just put that hard drive down there and we'll just go through some of the basic specs. They are optimized for um, NAS with Agile Array, so it enables dual plane balancing and time limited error recovery to deliver best in class rate performance in multi base systems. They are always on, always accessible. Iron Wolf drives are designed for 24 7 usage, allowing users to access the data anytime, anywhere. They are all CMR portfolio. All Iron Wolf drives utilize conventional magnetic recording, so that's CMR technology, for consistent best in class NAS performance. These drives can be purchased with a maximum storage of up to 12 terabytes. These are built off. Iron Wolf drives are rated for 180 terabytes a year workload, allowing consumer and commercial NAS users to seamlessly store and work with large amounts of network data. Superior reliability and dependability, iMove drives are rated for 1 million hours mean time between failures and include a three-year limited warranty for hassle-free storage and best-in-class total cost of ownership. Rotational vibration sensors, they have built-in RV sensors for vibration tolerance and consistent performance in multi-base systems. iMove health management, so that's IHM for short, actively protects your NAS data with prevention, intervention and recovery recommendations to ensure peak system health. Peace of mind with data recovery. Now these drives, uh, which is a good bonus I believe, they have included three years of complimentary rescue data recovery services. So that's an in-house secure facility with industry leading recovery rate of 95%. So you don't have to incur high recovery costs in the event of accidental data corruption or drive damage. So in the first three years after purchase, if your drive incurs data loss or drive damage, they will recover or attempt rather to recover your data free of charge for the first three years, which is great service to be added on to these drives um, peace of mind as well now moving on to the specs these are four terabyte drives they have a SATA 6 gigabits per second interface and they support up to a maximum of eight drive bays the recording technology is CMR the drive design is either air or helium and these drives are air 
Workload rate is 180. Rotation or vibration sensors, yes. Dual plane balance, yes. Error recovery control, yes. Maximum sustained transfer rate, and that is 202 megabytes per second. The spindle speed on these, by the way, is 5,400 revolutions per minute. And the cache on these is 256 megabytes. The mean time between failures is 1 million hours. And as I said, they include three years of rescue data recovery service and also the warranty on these is three years. So that's basically these um, Seagate Ironwolf drives. So again, thanks to Seagate for sending out these drives with this NAS. So it's great to have these drives in this NAS for testing purposes. Now, I should say, with both the QDAP NAS and these. These were sent to me free of charge. No financial transaction had taken place with these and neither companies, neither Seagate or QNAP have had any say in what this video should contain and they have not seen this video prior to it being uploaded on YouTube. So the views are entirely my own in this video. So I just wanted to get that disclaimer out of the way. So that's the QNAP NAS and the Seeker iMorf drives. So what we'll do in the next video is get the QNAP NAS powered on, drives inserted, um, whether I try it with just one or two drives for the time being, or whether I use all four, um, I'll decide when we do the video, but uh, we can always add more drives later on. So what we'll do is get that set up, as I said, in the next video in this series we'll get basic setup file sharing setup and then in future videos we'll get the containers and uh, maybe home assistant or something like that set up in one of the containers if you have a preference to what container or what app you would like me to see running on this um, QNAP NAS so please leave a comment below and I'll see what I can do in future videos thanks for watching this video hope you liked it and if you want to buy QNAP NAS, then head over to the QNAP website or, of course, your local suppliers. So thanks for watching this video. Hope you liked it and stay tuned because we've got some more videos in this series coming up soon. Bye for now.